Hello guys and welcome back to another part in my analog DIY synthesizer tutorial videos. Uh, now this is just a sort of a small tutorial with regards to the analog LFO. Now this circuit here is will be repeated on my project for my first LFO, LFO1 and LFO2. Now these are completely separate modulating LFOs from the pulse width modulation or LFOs on the VCOs. They're three separate ones. Uh, what we have here, if we have a look, we've got basically I'm using the LM324 quad op amp, so I'm going to use two of them. And what I have is the comparator and integrator setup. So we've got a very large timing cap there, which gives us quite a sort of low frequency. And we have a square wave output on that side, which I showed you in the basic one. And we have the rate control here while we tie pin one and six to a potentiometer, and we tie that to ground to stop it completely. And if we look here, as we've done in the VCOs, we've got a sine and symmetry, uh, sine and triangle balance, which is basically the offset, which we can sort of bend the triangle either sort of left or right to get the symmetry right, because the triangle is what you use to wave shape into the uh, sine wave. Now if I go here, down the bottom here, we can see this is where the actual sine wave circuit is. So we have six waves on here. We have, a, as you can see, we have a ramp up, ramp down, Sign, sign, sawtooth, sorry, sign, square, and the triangle, and also over here we have a sample and hold, which I'll talk get to in a minute. Anyway, so this is the values that I've used. I've seen this sine wave circuit pop up quite a few times, and the, the values that I've seen have kind of, um, kind of haven't worked for me, so I've just had a tinker about with it and adjusted the values, and I've got a really, really nice, um, curved edge sine wave which I'll show you all those uh, um, the actual waveforms in another part of this video and if we look down here we can see we've got these two diodes here so basically what I would recommend is that you measure these diodes and make sure their voltage drops match otherwise you can find your sine wave droops to one side or slightly to the other so that does help with the symmetry as well and we have a capacitor. I put in a capacitor there as well. I've seen it on another circuit. I can't quite make out whether or not that's actually too beneficial or not. And what we need to make sure is, is that we've got quite a high impedance um, going in. Otherwise, we're going to get some serious distortion on our sine wave. So we want our sine wave to be nice and as rounded as possible. Otherwise, it's going to be slightly squared off. And you'll notice the distortion more as you go down in frequency. The lower you go, it will sort of turn to a square. So I've tinkered with that. So when we get down to sort of like near enough, sort of say eight below 10 hertz, it's still got a nice sine curvature to the uh, to the waveform. And what I do here is I send the sine out. If we look on this first op amp here, this is where it's generated from the triangle output, which I'll try and go up. Sorry, let's take that out for a second. We can see that's the triangle output there. We come off that pin 7 node and we go in. And what I've done, we've basically sent it into an inverting amplifier and put a bit of gain on it. So the normal rule for the, um, the inverting sort of unity gain would be 100. Sorry, let that camera steady there. Would be say for instance we come out of the op amp and we go 100 into the inverting side and we put 100k in the feedback loop as well we have 200k resistors tied straight to ground we'll get a gain of one which is basically unity gain exactly what goes in comes out but sort of inverted phase and what i have done in mind is i boosted it to about 150 so it actually takes it up and sorts of like check the output level of the triangle wave or even the highest waves and sort of use resistors to balance so if we look under here I should have put the same thing under there as well resistor if we've got these little dots here that I've not put a prescribed value because basically the case is that you um, adjust these values to your taste to sort of get all the amplitudes of all your waveforms to match up and what we have here is a circuit which I borrowed from the actual um, from the mini brute schematics for the sample and hold, which I've managed to. I kind of thought about it for a while. Oh, I can't get that in, but managed to get it in. Uh, we have we have a little FET there which does this switching, which is a field effect um, transistor. It's not a bipolar or bipolar transistor like a you know like a general PMP or NPN. This is a FET with a source, a drain, and a gate on it. 
and we basically feed the we feed the um, we feed that fat with a noise generator which again I've come out the original noise generator inverted the signal into another op amp we come into the uh, drain side of it we can see a little bit of circuitry there and this is our holding capacitor which is polyethylene which is the sort of small box box style sort of rectangular box style capacitors and I've used a value of about 0.1 microfarads which is 100 nanofarads and as we can see there when we have fed so we feed it a clock signal which is the square wave out which goes into this another capacitor here which I've used 4.7 nanofarads and then basically we bring the two together so the random actual stepping of the square wave is caused by the random wave generation of the, the noise generator basically so we get that random voltage and that's all controlled by our rate control so there we have it basically and like I said I will flip over now and show you the actual output waveforms once this is completely finalized I will make this public and post this somewhere for you guys to uh, grab up etc all right and I'm just going to quickly go through with you um, what's happening next with the LFO output so now we've got our different wave shapes pulse we've got a saw up we've got our saw down we've got our triangle wave and we've also got a sine wave and we have our our sample and hold so all these different waveforms will be tied to a one two three four five six six way to one output rotary switch which will switch between the different outputs and will be sent you don't have to do this but this is will just help with protect the internal protection of the op amp could help when you send this off to the um, different modulation destinations is just to make a buffer here 
and we will basically just send that out to our various inputs for our say our um, envelope generator you could use this to trigger an envelope generator I would say use a pulse if you're going to try and um, trigger an envelope generator use the pulse use a clock pulse um, also you can send it to your um, oscillators you can send it to your VCF any module which can accept a control voltage we can send that um, switch the, this LFO into another way we could do this rather than messing about and having this um, inversion here <coughs> so what we do is basically same setup again we'll have our output waveforms sign if you notice here I'm only going to do one sawtooth variation or ramp up whatever you want to call it and we will send all those outputs again there's actually a couple ways you can do this actually because what we'll do is we will send this to we could send this to one op amp so we go straight in and oops that's wrong so we, again we just have the buffer so we go straight into the op amp into the non-inverting side so we're not actually flipping the signal and then we would go into that buffer and then we could send that via a resistor and remember if we're going we want unity gain which basically means exactly the amplitude we'll we're getting in we will get out but it'll be the inverse phase so say for instance I make this just just for argument's sake simplicity sake we'll call it 10k and then we'll go into the in Inverting side of our next op amp, and have I done that right? Yes, I have done that right. And we'll send that to a 10k. Sorry about the confusing drawing, I hope it uh, is clear enough ish. We'll send that into the 10k junction there, that's where we tie that 10k in, and then we send that straight to ground zero volts. And then we will have a reverse option here. And then once we've got this, so this will be our normal wave shapes and this will be the inverse wave shapes as you see on some synthesizers you have a plus and a minus and then we'll have our potentiometer and then what we'll do with the potentiometer is use the middle as the output out and then we'll send the normal into one side and the inverted into the other side. So as we turn that potentiometer wiper, we will get, well, we can actually use it as an intensity control. So when we get to this middle position, we should get zero volts. So the, the voltages, as long as they're equal, will cancel each other out and we'll have zero volts, like a voltage divider kind of things, but a trimmable one. So that's all we're doing. So we have plus LFO polarity and inverted um, envelope, sorry, envelope, LFO polarity and that's all there is to
Thank you. 